Okay, good evening again. I think this afternoon we are talking about the same thing, Aru and myself. We are talking about, well, callback how. Well, I'm not going to touch on that. I'm going to touch solely on React PHP. But then again, I need to um, pre, uh, scope it down first. I'm not telling you or showing you how, exactly what React PHP is. Okay, uh, I'll be going through something that is a lot simpler, hopefully, for you guys. But before that, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Wen Yen. Okay, I I actually work as a DevOps engineer right now, dealing with systems and uh, Linux system and all that. Well, of course, previously I worked as a PHP developer before uh, C++, all that. I go a long way back. Uh, when I was uh, first developing, we were still using DOS 3.0. Right, so it was a long, long time ago. Right, so there, I, I, I just love programming, uh, all things technical. Yeah, and currently I'm working at iVideo Smart. Uh, Zion is my uh, colleague there, and our company. What does it do? We are we are a video exchange company. We we provide an exchange for a content provider and service provider to exchange videos, deal with all things videos, and then we uh, we monetize through video ads. Right. And who are we? Who we are? We are a very strong and innovative team of engineers, right? And uh, very smart business people have strong leadership, right? Sometimes too strong, right? Extremely fun team. It's an extremely fun team. Okay, we always whack one another. We we tell jokes with one another. And we score one another in the in the name of fun, right? So I really enjoy working in this company, right? Uh, if you guys are interested, you can always talk to Zion. You know, to find out more about our company, what we do, and all that. Okay, so now, what is React PHP? Today, what we're going to tackle is just a concept and usage. We're not going to delve into how, how come React PHP works the way, the way it is. Okay. And the objective for today is for me to share with you my React PHP learning journey. When I first come to React PHP, I'm also a, 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 a blur sotong. Right? All Sing mostly Singaporean, huh? I'm just as blur as any one of you. I don't know what React. I know it can do asynchronous programming. I was looking something for a multi-threaded kind of uh, uh, a system in uh, PHP. A lot many years back, I I saw this. Uh, they have this uh, extension called PHP underscore pthreads. Right. I tried to use that to do uh, parallel processes uh, uh, tasks along. Yeah, but not very successful. It's very hard to use. Right. So finally, when I Chance upon React PHP, I was very happy. But then the joy was only short lived because after that, wow, the learning journey was very, very difficult. Right, very, very difficult. Yeah, what what uh, Aru have explained, I think, when he explained the, 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 the parallel, the asynchronous, synchronous part, I think a lot of us catch no ball. So, I mean, I also catch no ball, right? A little bit because I've been researching this. So, I can understand a bit of what you're trying to say. But I think for most of us who, who have not really dwelt with uh, on React PHP or synchronous programming or event loop and all those, you would may, may find it a bit difficult to understand. So today I'm going to share with you my learning journey. Okay, hopefully it will point you in the right direction. After tonight, you may still not you may still not how to you may still not know how to do uh, how to program React PHP, but hopefully I can point you in the right direction. Okay, that's going to be hard work, right? And I'm going to cut out the complicated stuff and focus on the simple and powerful. And I have many examples. In fact, I have 10 examples to show you. Okay, hopefully it will bring you progressively into what React PHP is all about. Okay, before we go into the examples, let's clear the five W's. Okay, who? Right, do you trust the developers and library on the whole? Right, what? What is it good for? React PHP, of course, in this case. Where? Where can I use it? Right? When? When should I use it? And why? Why did it work the way it did? Okay. So in my learning journey, I realized that I have to cut out number five. Why? Because if I do too much in it, I will never progress on. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll share a little bit about that just uh, later. So we will concentrate on the what, where, and when. On the who part, can I encourage you that when you try to use a new library, not just React PHP, any library, when you look at the library, 
you look at the developer. Do you trust the developer? If you trust the developer, then don't open up the source code and go and find out how to do stuff. Just trust them and use it for its intended pur purpose. So when you have the time, you know, like uh, we have a gentleman down there who is uh, who have a bucket list of things to do, right? Because you're very free right now, right? You have a you're very established. When you have the time, you can go and dig the source code and go and find out, right? But right now, like us, you know, we uh, have a family to feed and all that. We may not have time to go and dig out how, why it works that way. We just want to use it, right? For for most of us. So I would encourage you. Number five, don't dwell on it. First, look at how to use it, what to use it for, where and when to use it. In this case, talking about React PHP. So what is React PHP? Uh, from the React PHP uh, website, it says that it's a low-level library for event-driven programming in PHP. So um, event-driven programming, I will not explain what it is. I really understand the presentation so I hope you do okay it's driven by events literally uh, explaining with the term itself right so what is it to me as a PHP developer okay it allows me to perform multitasking but what kind of multitasking cooperative multitasking how many of you know what that means cooperative multitasking okay the other multitasking is the only other one that I know is preemptive multitasking. Right? Preemptive multitasking means that you your your program may be doing something, right? The OS can preempt you and switch to another process to work on it. Right. So you you will never know when you are be you your your code will be preempted. Of course the, the OS will come back to you to continue, like something like you lah, right? It will allow it, it will tell you, okay, now your 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 CPU slice it's yours, you can run for this slice. Then later on, it will preempt you again. That's preemptive multitasking. But cooperative multitasking is mostly referring to a single threaded program, right? But you seemingly seem to be doing several things at a time, right? But you cooperate with the other, uh, not processes, but the other functions to give up control so that they can also do their stuff, you can also do your stuff, but single threaded, right? So, Sometimes you think about it, how can a single thread run multiple things at the same time? Right? Aru have already shown us a bit of what it is. Right? Uh, he, he used the generator and the code routines, all the stuff to do the cooperative multitasking. It is still cooperative multitasking. Right? But we for me, I'm not that I'm not that deep into all this, so I use libraries. And I try not to understand what is the underlying thing first. I'll try to use it first. So tonight we'll go through that. Where and when to use uh, React PHP very quickly. Actually, you can use React PHP anywhere, anytime, but React PHP thrives when there are many blocking or waiting I.O. calls. Okay? Whenever there's an I.O. call, no point waiting for it. Right? You, you can carry on to do other things, but how do you do that? We'll go through it later. It's good for long running process. In my opinion, I, I use React PHP for a very long running process. I have a, a React PHP that keeps collecting logs right, from all the different uh, Nginx service, right? and it's run, it has been running for a few months. Not nothing wrong with it, right? And it's only taking about less than one percent CPU. Right? And React PHP is excellent as a HTTP request listener and dispatcher. In fact, it's excellent for writing web service, right? So instead of using Nginx or Apache, which you should, but you can use it. You can also write your own web server using. Uh, React PHP. Of course, if you do that, you have to take care of all the other stuff like your security, firewall, those stuff which Nginx and Apache is doing for you. Right? But if you, if you write your own web server, you have full control of your web server. So I'm thinking of doing that. Right? Not yet. And especially when you need to service incoming requests very quickly, you can use React PHP. Okay. And when not to use React PHP? Okay. When you need to incorporate sp specific I/O libraries into your script, okay. In order to use React PHP, you are, in a way, is very powerful. But you are also cr crippling yourself. You cannot use a lot of things. A lot of the PHP functions you cannot use. Okay. Those blocking functions you cannot use. For example, if you want to use MySQL Open or PDO 
uh, PDO execute is it PDO connection or I can't remember the, the exact name you want to use any PDO function you cannot why because you are blocking calls you have to use a of that function if react PHP implements them so you are very crippled a lot of functions you cannot use right those functions have to that have to wait you can't use them you can use them of course but it defeats the purpose because you again you block you see when you call MySQL you need to wait for the, the data to come back, the connection to be open, you are blocking. So it defeats the purpose of using React PHP. So you really need to use the React PHP version of it. Right? And don't use it as a PHP FPM script. That means use it uh, you know, uh, when you have an Apache or an Nginx, then uh, you write PHP script, right? a Hello World PHP script, then you go to Apache, Apache will call the PHP script via PHP FPM module don't use that why because these scripts are meant to be started executed for a short time and then ended so react php is, is not good at all that the reason one of the reason being that react php bootstrapping that means when you start running with react php there are many many libraries to boot to to to, to first boot up right so the overhead for bootstrapping though those code uh, may be too significant against the overall script time because the script meant, meant to be run only a short while a few hundred milliseconds right but in order to 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 incorporate react php code uh, you already take up 500 milliseconds so it's not it's not worth it right in that case right and when global variables are being used and are constantly updated so if let's say you you are running you are using react php to write a long long running process maybe you, you use it to write a web server Right. when there's a request coming in and then the way that you code your application service uh, using React PHP is that you use a lot of global variable this request comes in then when you need to serve this request you make use of global variable you update its value when a second request comes in right the first request has not ended it may, may, may be making some blocking IO call so waiting so React PHP service a second request and then you write to the same global variable so when the first request comes back in, you're gonna eh, this variable has changed, right? So it won't work that way, right? I have thought about using React PHP to to run WordPress in the backend. I can't do that. Why? Because WordPress they have this uh, variable. Go, they have ma they use many global variables. Uh, the dollar sign WPDB. How how many of you you uh, develop in WordPress? None of you, right? You know, there's many global variables that they use. So if I use React PHP to, to uh, as a web server to fire off WordPress requests, I'll run into all kinds of race condition. Right, race condition. Okay, so do not use React PHP in those instances. Okay, prerequisite to understand to really benefit from today's uh, presentation on React PHP. You must already be an intermediate PHP level developer okay, because some of the things here I just assume that you already know. Okay? And you must know how to use namespace, anonymous function. You must know what are they and how to use them. Like the use, the use keyword is pretty new to me. I only got to know it sometime last year. Use, right? The use keyword. Not, not just in traits, but in passing on the, the, the parameter into the function scope. You must uh, know how to use Composer Package Manager, right? Because you will need it to install the React PHP packages and other packages. By the way, I will also be talking a bit about Recoil PHP later on as well, just a little bit. And you must know what is PS for, PSR for auto loading. I hope you guys know because if you do not know, well, you can always go back and read up. Maybe I, maybe I can make this slide available. You can always find out. I think this is the key. Okay, you must be able to do what Elsa did. Let it go. Okay, you let it go and you move on. I think there must be quite a number of us here. When we develop something, we read, we, f we found a library. We have that desire to want to know how did this developer program this library. Then we dig into the source code and find out, you know, by the time we find out how it works. Some of us, some of us don't.
can never find out but we already spent so many weeks so many months trying to understand then the real thing didn't get done right we're just trying to understand it i remember the last time when i was doing windows programming c plus plus wow i'm not sure who there, there was this thing called microsoft foundation class my colleague was using it wow i cannot take it i must go back the classic windows programming way i must program in c plus plus i micro mfc is for those people who don't know anything about programming. For me, I know C++, I know OOP. I must understand classic Windows programming. Then he got everything developed. He, he developed so many, so many apps already, and I'm still learning classic Windows programming. So you must be able to let it go. When you look at React PHP, don't try to understand the, the underlying uh, principle, how it works and all that. You can, but don't let that stop you from doing the actual thing, doing asynchronous programming the synchronous way, okay? Okay, because you should focus on concepts. Don't get drowned by details and complexity. Trust the library to do the plumbing work. Okay, don't do your own plumbing work. Trust, trust the library to do your plumbing work. Okay, so that, that is what I learned so far for learning React PHP. Concepts that we will explore, we will explore the... Oh, I think I cut out the slide for that. Okay, but we will still talk a bit about event loop. Uh, React PHP is all about the event loop. And we will talk about promise, promises what Aru have uh, mentioned earlier, we will delve a little bit into that. Not too much, but enough for us to get things done. Okay. We also talk a bit about promise chaining. That's the part about uh, doing things the synchronous way. Doing a synchronous programming the synchronous way. A bit oxymoron, but it, it actually works. Okay. Example number one. Program, it take a few seconds to look at it. It's just a few lines. Okay, it's basically this is a Hello World um, a React PHP program. Okay, so let me break down the different components. In a React PHP program, there is always the loop. You create loop, the event loop. Then you create, you write your own payload, the things you want P React PHP to do for you. Then you execute the forever loop, the event loop. You run forever, you will not stop. Which means that nothing else should come after the loop, let dash, uh, loop, arrow, run. Because whatever you put after this line of code, you will never get executed. The run, the, the loop run method will run forever. Okay. So this program, what it does is that you can see uh, Wait, 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 before this. Let us run this program. Huh? I have exactly the, 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 the program. Is it too... Eh, sorry. Is this... Uh, oh, it is... I didn't know. Oh. Example 01. Hello world. Uh, my program is a bit slow. Yes, it prints hello world. That's what it does. Very simple. But this is done in an asynchronous way. Okay, look at this. Uh, okay, I'll talk about this later. But look at here, we have a print. What is wrong here? Okay. It is a blocking IO call. Print itself is a blocking IO call. So that's why earlier on I was saying that when you use React PHP, you cripple yourself in many ways. You cannot use call like this. Print itself is an IO call. It prints into the console. right? Right. Anything that's outside of your own process, they, they need to talk to anything outside of your own process is an I.O. call. Right. So it talks to the standard out I.O. Right. So because of that, if you use this, you are defeating the purpose of using React PHP. So this is the correct version. Of course, printing something out in the standard out is so uh, fundamental. React PHP have to, of course, it will provide for it. So this is how you print out to standard I/O. Okay. So of course, I will not go into how this is implemented, right? So, uh, yeah, uh, you should go find out how. Why is it? Well, don't find out the why. Just use it. Okay. This is how you print out to standard out. Okay. So that's what I meant by uh, you have to use a, PHP, a React PHP version of that function. Okay. If it blocks. Of course, if I, I, I have this program, it's the same program. I mean, uh, maybe I'll just run it. So, uh, 
PHP example to two, right? It does the same thing. Hello world. Okay. Okay. Let's look at this program a little bit more as well. You look at this part. This is a payload part, right? What does it look like to you? You see, there is a add timer, which is the event. Actually, it's more like the okay. It's an event subscription notification to callback. Where is the callback? The callback is this uh, the the function part, right? This is the callback. This is a callback, right? Then where is the event subscription? Actually, this is the part when you add a timer. The event is a timer event. Then one is the part the well the parameter for the event sub subscription. You want to wait for one second, right? So this is it. This is the event subscription callback method. Okay, so uh, the equivalent of uh, JavaScript, I think a lot of us knows JavaScript, right? The equivalent of this is a set timeout, set interval in JavaScript. So you can do that in PHP using React PHP. Without this, you won't be able to do that, right? You can do a sleep, sleep, right? But that's blocking. That means you you can't redo really a synchronous call. Okay. Now, uh, this is. The third example, right? Uh, is a server request. That means uh, you 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 are writing a, a HTTP server using React PHP, right? So the okay, the crucial part is here. When I was uh, learning how to do this, I just copied the code wholesale from um, from React PHP and then and then use it. The only part where I need to change is this portion, this is the request handler. The request handler, in fact, which means that this is a callback function. Right? First of all, you do all the initialization. Right? You create the loop. The loop is always there. Execute the loop forever. This two is always there. You always have the loop, and then you execute the loop forever. This two will always be there in any React PHP program. Then the payload part is the part where you specify what you want to do. So these few lines of code write creates a web server already, a very simple web server. Whenever anybody calls uh, port 8080, right, this will run. This will run. Okay. I have another version of this. This is the same version, it's just that now I'm listening at two ports instead of just one. Right. If I do this, you say, hey, this is still like, you're still doing one thing, right? you're just listening for one, you are still listening for requests and then servicing the request. Only one. You are doing one thing at a time. So to prove to you that React PHP is actually a cooperative multitasking library, I added yet another uh, listening port. Right. So there's actually a web server. This is a web server listening at two ports. Right. At port 8080 and port 8081. Right. And then when there's a request coming in. This will just simply returns a response. So hello world from 8080. This uh, the second one returns hello world from 8081. So let us do a test. Uh, let me try Chrome. You know before I before I came here, I make sure this thing runs because I see so many people do presentation when they actually run the code, it doesn't run. So then it's very maluing. All right, local host. But the only sad thing is that I cannot see properly from here. 8080. Ah, see, it doesn't run. Yeah. Did I type in anything wrong? I can't really see. HTTP local host 8080. Did I type anything? Huh? Oh, okay, thank you. You know, in the office, this uh, Zion is always reminding me of things that I carelessly forget. Uh, Thanks, Zion. Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't run it. I need to run PHP. You see, I can't jump, I forget. 0, 3. That's why we have a Huh? Oh. Okay, so now it's running. Uh, now it's actually listening at the two ports, 8080 and 8081. So when I do a refresh, ah, see 8080. So when I go to 8081, Ah, 8081. So actually, it's doing two things at the same time. It's listening for two ports, right? And 
if let's say all of you whip out your computer or start whacking it at the same time, it will still reply you. Okay, it can do multiple things at, at the same time. So that is React PHP. Okay. Ah, uh, see. Now I need to get back to the. Okay. Run, uh, let me go back to the presenter view. Okay, so so you can see that this is actually two well a single web server listening at two ports, server A and server B. Okay, so I hope you are convinced that React PHP actually does multitasking cooperatively. So imagine if let's say uh, down here, down here, if I did not write this code, I I write I put uh, one one line of or ten lines of code that does a lot of things. Then, uh, then this will not be cooperating with the rest, right? If I do something here that takes up a lot of time, then he'll be eating up. He'll be he'll be honing up all the other process, uh, the other code, the the other block of code. So this is what I meant by cooperative multitasking. You, everyone cooperates to do what they need to do very quickly, so that the time can be given back the, to the other uh, blocks of code that needs to run it, right? Something will take more time. Do it in the background. Don't hold the process. That's the idea. Uh, because it's single threaded, so whatever you do, it will still hold up. But it's single threaded. So yeah. Unlike JavaScript, maybe you have WebSocket and a worker and all that. Is that you they actually use a se a separate thread, UI thread or whatever thread. But this guy only single threaded. So whatever you do takes up your CPU. So you have to do it very quickly. Right. So the fourth example. You can actually get all this code from uh, the React PHP GitHub uh, repository. So I took the code from there and adapted a little bit. So this is instead of a HTTP server code, this is a HTTP client code, right? So um, okay. So very similar. Uh, I have the loop. Hey, where's the loop? Wait. I think I forgot to put a loop here. Is there? I can't see. Okay, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. correct, correct. Okay, this is a loop, then the for forever running the loop, then the payload. In this case, I create a client, a HTTP client. That's why I say you need to know, need to know namespace, right? Because uh, it's like a shortcut. This is a, this is supposed to be React HTTP client, client. So I use this, put in the loop, right? Then ah, this is a standard out, right? I need this to write to the the console. Ah, this is the part. This is the part where I create the HTTP request call, right? Get to my local host. Then, when the with with this request object dash on, then when there's a response event, run this callback function. It is still callback. This is very callback based, right? So what is that? What does this look like to you? Right? This looks like jQuery to you, right? A very jQuery style, right? So the when I first started learning React PHP, I find out wow, when this React PHP tries to do cooperative multitasking, it has so many so so many style. Like the the add timer, if you go back, the add timer is doesn't really look like a jQuery style, but it is it it is a di a different way to call. And then you you have a HTTP server that calls in this way that did. There's a callback, then the HTTP server, and then this is a this you have a on dash on. So it can get very confusing sometimes because React PHP when different uh, because React PHP is contributed that the, that have many contributor each contrib contributor might implement their own style of uh, making callback. Right, doing blocking I/O and ma making callback, so it's very confusing. In this case, maybe the H I'm guessing, I'm guessing, I'm not sure. Maybe the HTTP client is written by a different developer, a, a different contributor. So he chose the the jQuery style of doing uh, callback, right? Handling the uh, right, uh, the no the notification, right? So so in this case, this is a jQuery style, okay? So when you try to learn about Re React PHP, just take note that 
uh, there are many different styles of uh, doing uh, e uh, event subscription and callback. Right. Okay. Now, this is yet another way. Okay. But this is the way that uh, we want to explore a bit more. Okay. It's using promises. Take a look at the code. Same thing. There's a loop. There's a forever loop running. Right. But what happens here? Right. Of course, I create the DNS, uh, the, the DNS object, give it a DNS server, which is a Google server, right? Pass it a loop. Here is the part. I try to resolve this address into an IP. Okay. But this guy, why? Because it needs, it will take some time to get the IP address of www.microsoft.com. So it doesn't block here. It will return me straight away. But it doesn't return me the exact IP because it haven't it, it, it hasn't got it yet so what he, what he returns me is that a promise a promise that he will deliver the result later okay and then I take the promise I say then with this promise then I assume that the IP will come back I will just use it so this is like a callback in fact it's a callback okay but this style again is different right this style is different okay so let me run this. Uh, what example is that? Five. five. So, oh, I need to stop this server from running. DG05. Yeah. Yes. You see? It does. Note the resolving dot dot dot. Where was it? It's here. So this thing did not get executed, but resolving got executed first. Right, that's why resolving so was in front of the IP address. Then later on, when the IP address was ready, then my this callback function was called. Right, so I have a hard time finding out what promises are all about. Okay, so I hope tonight I can help you shorten that journey to understand what are promises. In fact, promises are everywhere. Promises started with JavaScript. Okay, PHP borrowed it. So if you can understand promises being used here in React PHP, learning JavaScript promises is going to be, in fact, zero learning curve already because you already know it. Okay? So we try to make it easy to understand. Promises. What are promises? Okay, I have this, uh, I, I try to create this scenario to make it easy to understand. You want, A, want to request some data from B, right? And B, need time to process and to return the data. So instead of re returning data, which you don't have, he promised, I promise you I'll give you the data. Okay? So A, what A have immediately after calling B is that he have a promise. He don't have the actual result yet, but he has a promise. Okay? So with the promise received from B, A went ahead, okay? go ahead and plan what he would do when the data is finally given to him. Okay? When the result, this is the resolve part. That means he, he managed to resolve the issue, he get the data already, okay? So he planned what he want to do when the data is finally given, or he also maybe don't really trust B. Say, what if B defaults and breaks his promise? I will also handle that. Okay, so this is promises, the way I understand it, okay? So when you make a blocking call, when you make a blocking call, because it's blocking also you need time to process to return the data, what you get is a promise. Because blocking call cannot return you the data immediately, the, the, the result immediately. So he returned you a promise. So you go ahead and take this promise and plan what you want to do when the data is ready or when the data cannot be delivered. Right? So look at this pseudocode on the right-hand side. So you A want get to get B to do something and B only returns a promise. Say, so okay, I'll do it for you. Right? Then A, okay, with this promise, he go ahead. Should B fulfill his promise to A, that means, yeah, I would do something with the data, right? The first function, okay? This is not a code block, huh? mm. these two are parameters, huh? the functions are, are, are parameters. I left three minutes, okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the part uh, when it, uh, the promise is not fulfilled. I think a little bit more than that, <laughs> okay? Okay, so this basically is what promises are all about. Okay, but there's more than that. Okay. So next thing is promise chaining. 
promise chaining. I go very quickly. This is promise chaining. Okay, you have a the first promise A get something right. And then based on this promise, you do what you need to do when the data is eventually uh, given to you. The promise is fulfilled or the promise is not fulfilled, right? Okay, but after doing something, oh, after doing something, you can go and do another blocking stuff. Okay, another promise. You go and get C to do something, right? So after get, getting B to do something, right, and B finally returns you the information, then you go ahead and ask C to do something, and C also return you a promise, right? And when C return you a prom promise, you go to the next then. Okay, each of these then uh, is a function, right? It's a function call. Uh. These are parameters, uh. They are not code, uh, they are parameters. Just that uh, it's the two parameters, each of them is an anonymous function, right? So this then function, then function always return yet another promise. That's why you can go and then again, because then is a method of a promise object. So you then again, then whatever that is written here is the data that C will return you. Right, then you do something with C, then and so forth and so so on and so forth. So, in this case, you can do your stuff synchronously. Right, you do A, you do you you get B to do something, get C to do something, then get D to do something, get E to do something, get F to do something. They will all be do sequentially. Okay. 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 Allow synchronous order to an otherwise asynchronous flow. Why is this a Why I call this asynchronous when it's still like like synchronous? Because this is only one block, right? You can have another block, another block, another block, another block. They will all run at the same time. I will show you that later. Okay. So you see a promise, a promise. Then function two return another promise. Then function three another promise. Then then then. So function one, two, all the way to the end. They will all run. In order that they are coded, one will run first, two followed by three, four all the way to end. So you can have a synchronous way of doing stuff. Okay, example two. Look at this. Now the DNS resolver. Look at this. I have a DNS. It's the same DNS uh, a code that I have earlier on. Okay. Now ten minutes. Ten minutes. Okay. So now the first time I call to resolve Lotus. Second one I call to resolve Google. So this is not using the the promise chaining. I just call call this. It returns a promise. Then I based on a promise, I print the IP address. Same thing here. So these two are gonna run in parallel. This will run. They wait for the IP to come back. This will also run. And wait for the IP to come back. So this is promise six A. If I run this, is it six A? Six. No chaining. What? Okay, I change it a little bit. I run four of them instead of two. Do you see one, four, two, three, right? See the order is not correct. One, four, two, three. Okay. Whichever uh, comes first comes first. Yes, whichever return to him first, you just display first, right? So you cannot get a synchronous order, right? Again, it's not in order. But if I run the chaining on. The one with training is this one, two, three, four. It's in order. It's in order. Okay. So this is the one with the the chaining on. Just that here there's two, right? One, two, right? I added another two more, three and four. Okay. But there's a caveat to this. This, if let's say you have one thousand of them, they will all return almost the same time. But this one will go one after another. So it's maybe one thousand times longer, okay. But you see, this this is one. Eh, this is one, right? You can run this many times as well, okay. So you can still do multitasking. Okay, example seven, cust custom promise. Okay, I uh, note that just now I was talking about the different style, different contributor do uh, the do the callback in their own style. Okay, but I find that only when I use promise, then I can go sequential. I, because of the promise chaining, I can actually impose the order where I can run my code. 
Okay, so I have to convert everything into a promise. This is what I found out. I'm not sure whether, it, whether this is the best way of doing it. So what I do is that I convert a a timer into a a promise. So you look at this custom sleep, the 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 bottom custom sleep, right? Right. What I do is that I receive, I I I create a new promise object, okay, and then I run the. Uh, this is how you create a promise object. Okay, I if I take time to explain it, it will take a long time. You can go and study the code. What it does is that it wait inside this promise. First of all, I return someone who called me, someone who called custom sleep. I return him a promise. I say, okay, I promise you, I will do this for you, right? Then this function is what I actually do. So inside there, I add a timer. Wait for one second. So when one second is up, I resolve. I say, okay, this is what I will give you, right? So when you call custom sleep, one second later, I will call you. Then you will do what you plan to do when the promise is resolved, fulfilled to you. So this is my custom sleep function. So you see how, how it's being run on top here? <coughs> right. I call custom sleep loop and then give five seconds, then run this function. So this wake up after five seconds will be printed five seconds later. Okay. And just to prove to you that this can be done in a multitasking way, I added yet another piece of code that will run every one second. Okay, but after the fifth second, this thing will come up to prove to show that this actually sleep for five seconds. This is example seven. <coughs> so, oh, sorry. So you see, you go one, two, three, four, then you wake up, sleep for five seconds. Okay. So this is what it does. Okay. So, uh, but you look at here. This is a very clunky piece of code. In order to uh, to wait for five seconds, I need to do how how many lines? One, two, three. One, two, three line. Wow. What this and this in order to wait, and then uh, what I want to do after the five second is up is in inside inside the, this block so it's very clunky what i wanted to do is actually sleep five and then print wake up after five seconds that is what i want to do right aru was saying that uh 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 with the callback hell your code become very clunky very hard to navigate through your code so yes it's exactly what what is happening right now right so i may have achieved a sequential way of do, doing things it, but i can't get rid of this clunky code so this is actually what I want to do. But if I do this, I will block for five seconds and PHP will do nothing else but just to wait for five seconds. But when I do this, I can still go ahead and do this. You see, maybe clunky code, but at least I can do multitasking. Right? So can we have both? Right? Uh, tough. Okay. So here, uh, what I did is that I go ahead and uh, put DNS re resolver into a pr promise level uh, uh, function. So I, I wrap around this uh, uh, re resolver code into a uh, function and also wrap around HTTP request, the client. Remember the HTTP client thing I did early on? I wrap it around a promise as well. You see, I, I return them a promise. So whoever called me, I return him a promise, say that, okay, I will, I will make the request for you. I request you out for you and return you the data. All the code are here. So it returns a promise. And I also have a custom sleep. I say that, okay. Uh, you call me, I will return you a promise. Five seconds later, I will, I, I, I will call you. Right. So I have three functions which I return, I wrap around so that they are all, they all return promises to me. Okay, they all return promises to me. Then with it, I write an all and one example. Look at this code. The first code I resolve, www.lotus.com. Then I wait for five seconds. Right. Then I do a HTTP request. So this will be done in synchronous way okay so you look at it oh, still running PHP example 09 right all in one see you will get the IP address of www.lotus.com wait for five seconds five seconds later it will return the request okay. of course I can duplicate this code another time another time three of them will run in parallel okay now Last example, last example. Okay, now using required PHP, I will not go into what is required PHP. 
you can read it up yourself. With required PHP, this is the same code as this one. This is the same code. Yes, we will use, we'll be using you. We will be using you. Okay. But you don't have to care. Not that you don't have to care. Take it for now that you need a U in front. Okay. Because I wrote all this function to return promises. When I yield a promise, right, this thing will wait. So look at this code. One, two, three, three lines. And then the custom sleep really is just a one liner. Instead of a three, three, uh, we, within a function, this really is a, a, a one liner code, and this is what it does. Right? So, but of course, sorry, let me go into it. I'm using recoil, recoil PHP, the one that's written for React. And because of that, anytime when I create a kernel object and then do a kernel execute and put a callback function inside, this function can be executed in a synchronous fashion and call in a very readable form. Okay, let me show you my uh, this soon and another ending soon, ending soon. In my code, right? Is this level 10? Yes, 10, right? So I have one of them. So uh, just to prove to you it works, let me go to here and run right, PHP 10. Recoil, see? It does, and it runs. Okay, it does what it do. So you see here, right now, what if I duplicate this code? One time, two, three, that's four of them. Okay, then I go back to run it again. Do you see? It runs in parallel. Then wait for five seconds. Five seconds later, all the all them come out. So I managed to do synchro that means all this do one after another, all this do one and one one after another, but these four pieces of code, one, two, three, and four. They all run in parallel. So I managed to achieve uh, a synchronous programming in a synchronous fashion or the other way around. Synchronous for programming in a synchronous fashion. Okay. So go back. It's ending soon. So up what are afterthoughts? Okay. So React PHP is a tool for writing called operating multitasking application. And I use it mainly for console app and uh, promise training. When used with promise training and required PHP, you achieve coding styles similar to multi-threaded programming code from other languages like C, Python, all that that have multi-threading. You in but you also inherit some of the same problem, like you have a race condition for global variable, right? And suggestion is that you always create a self-containing handler object to service incoming requests so that you never use global variable. You, everything is contained within a class and object. So you will never have race condition now with that. And there's no context switching. Unlike the uh, preemptive multitasking, you always pay the price of context switching. You realize that if, let's say, in, a, in, in, your, in your server, right, once you run into a few hundred processes, a few thousand processors, your whole your your whole your whole server hangs. Do things very slowly. Why? It's context switching from one process to another. It's spending more than eighty percent of the time just context switching and doing nothing useful. So pre preemptive multitasking is still have its issue, whereas cooperative multitasking have no such issue because it does it's safe on the context switching. Everything is done in a single thread, right? The responsibility is like divided and given to everybody. Each and every process is responsible to give the thing back. In cooperative multitasking, each of the function, yes, correct. So that's why it's lightning fast. Okay, so let it go. Always go for strong understanding of concept first, then implement, then the implementation detail. If you have the luxury of time and mental energy. Okay, so, so this is a key that I want you to take. Trust the force behind the React PHP library. The developers, la, trust the force is the people who develop the React. Trust them, then use it. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's all. Any questions? Thank questions? you very much. Yes. Basic question, but they tend to be like the code after root down. After again? Uh, after root run. Root run method, loop run. Oh, loop run, yes. 
Yeah. yeah. Something? No. Yeah. You, you can write, but it will never get executed. Yeah, uh, yeah execute it after. Uh, I can't. I can't really oh, hear sorry. you. So no uh, is actually the. It has, it will be. It has to be the last uh, statement. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, because it will run forever. The loop run will, will never will, will never end. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.